Believe it or not, there was a time when Friends almost wasn't there for you. Thanks to casting shakeups, poor test audience ratings, and flack from NBC, the show was very close to DOA until a few fortunate coincidences brought the Central Perk 6 together at last. Here's what almost stopped Friends from happening. The one with the complicated cast. There's no doubt about it that Friends was a success thanks to the comedic chemistry of its leads Courtney Cox, David Schwimmer, Jennifer Aniston, Matthew Perry, Lisa Kudrow, and Matt LeBlanc. But as with any sitcom, it was a total case of Hollywood revolving doors that these six ultimately landed their roles. I loathe myself. <laughs> For starters, co-creators Marta Kaufman and David Crane originally envisioned Janine Garofalo in the role of Monica Geller, and offered Courtney Cox the part of Rachel Green instead. Kaufman told Vanity Fair, "...the character was darker and edgier and snarkier, and Courtney brought a whole bunch of other colors to it." Cox decided that Monica was the role for her, though, and the producers ultimately caved. Meanwhile, Matthew Perry was high on the initial list for the role of Chandler Bing, but he'd already signed up for a sci-fi comedy series called LAX 2194. Somebody at, uh uh, at Fox at the time said, we've seen this, it's the worst thing we've ever seen in our lives. He is available. You can hire him for your little show called Friend." Imagining anyone else as Chandler is so not cool. But the show would have been completely different if Jennifer Aniston wasn't Rachel. The network originally offered the part to actress Dami Gertz, against the producer's wishes, but she turned it down. Meanwhile, Aniston was still contractually bound to another unaired show with CBS called Mudding Through, so until that series was canceled, it was uncertain whether she'd be able to accept the role. Oh, thank God! As for the other three, well, the role of Joey Tribbiani wasn't originally written to be so dense, but when Matt LeBlanc busted his face on a drinking bender the night before his audition, they figured that he was good at playing dumb. And Lisa Kudrow was a no-brainer for the co-creators thanks to her role as Ursula Buffet in Mad About You. But she'd had a tough history with director James Burroughs, since he'd previously fired her from the pilot rehearsals for Frasier, and was concerned he might block her from nabbing the part as a result of the friction. Last but certainly not least, David Schwimmer was a shoe in for Ross, and wasn't required to do any auditions or screen tests to land the role, but he didn't want it. He'd given up on testing for television by then, and was focused on starting a theater company in Chicago. Ultimately, it was the involvement of director Burroughs that drew Schwimmer in. He told Vanity Fair, "...it was hugely flattering, and I thought, well, it's quite disrespectful with all this talent asking to meet and just consider it. I'd be an idiot not to go." The one with the terrible test scores. Much like the love lives underscored in the show's earworm theme song, the test pilot for Friends didn't go over so well with audiences. In May 1994, five months before the show would eventually premiere, the pilot for the show, which was originally titled Six of One, then Friends Like Us, was screened and given a poor performance rating. Ooh, she should not be wearing those pants. <laughs> I say push it down the stairs. Chief among the complaints was the likability of the characters. Monica was moderately favored by test audiences, but characters like Rachel and Joey were called unappealing. The report concluded, most viewers felt the show was not very entertaining, clever, or original. Following the show's initial notes, NBC suggested that a major change be made to the structure of the series. Kaufman told Huffington Post, We were told by the network, no one's going to watch a show about people in their 20s. They said, you have to have an older person. That proposed character would have been a policeman named named Pat or Coffee Joe, who sort of supervised the romantic affairs of the friends and provided a mature voice to their goings-on. Kaufman rejected the idea, however, though she did cave by adding a few parental characters to the regular mix. Crane ultimately decided, "...this show was always the six friends, and we were prepared to live or die by that." In addition to the network's concerns over audience testing, the co-creators also had to contend with one executive who deeply disliked Monica hooking up with Paul the Wine Guy on their first date. In fact, he was so concerned that he'd even handed out a questionnaire to test audiences which asked if they believed Monica was a, quote, trollop. Much to his surprise, though, it wasn't the romantic dalliance that had the audience issuing their thumbs down. Rather, a scene where Ross used his ex-wife's menstrual pads for arch supports in his shoes was deemed too offensive to make the cut. The one with that filled space. Despite all these behind-the-scenes difficulties, the real reason Friends made it to air was simple. NBC needed to fill a blank space on its schedule. Although network executives strongly disliked Friends, as well as a sister debut series ER, they were waved through for Thursday night's schedule with scant hopes of them becoming hits. Little did they know, the series would be an instant sensation, earning both respectable viewership numbers and the highest ratings of any debut program that year, eventually becoming a cultural phenomenon that still resonates with audiences to this day. 
today. The show became part of NBC's Thursday night must-see TV and garnered an incredible 52.5 million viewers for its series finale in 2004. Each of the show's six stars have gone on to enjoy busy careers, and it even made a cult favorite out of the background actor who played Gunther, James Michael Tyler. So while the network might have seen the show as a wash when it originally aired, it was the little entertainment engine that could in the end. Thank you! <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the list icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.